Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can make burning shader in Cinema 4D and Octane. Let me first show you my scene I have here. So in the settings, I have just path tracing kernel, quite low samples and quite low samples for the diffuse and specular and a few other stuff that just help me with the animation, like the adaptive sampling and static noise. So those settings were optimized for this small animation. And here's really important stuff. We have bloom and just make sure it's a bit cut out so it doesn't blow off the white color from the background. I just want to have glow on the fire itself. And here we have this simple shape. I just make a spline in a illustrator. It's because uh, I feel more confident there with uh, vectors than with the splines in the Cinema 4D. So I just make this simple shape and just use the, the sweep to make it solid. We have HDRI here, which looks like this. We have plane, of course, for the ground with simple material here. And we have, of course, the camera. And that's it for my scene here. So now we can start making our burning shader. I will start from getting rid of all of those extra stuff I have here. So I will delete material, vertex maps, shader field, and I have just clean object without anything. Also make sure the density of the polygons is something like this. It can be also triangles or end guns. Just make sure it's quite dense to make sure it's nice quality. Now let's go to create extensions for the octane and this time around we'll use octane composite let's apply it to our object let's double click on it and click at the node editor we can close the material editor and in here let's click at our material and let's just drag out from the material one sub material let's copy it connect it to the material two let's make space between because we want to add vertex map here between which will work as a mask between the materials. And that's it for now in the node editor in Octane. Now we need to set up our vertex map. So let's click at our object. Make sure you are in a polygon selection mode. Go to the select and set vertex weight. Let's click OK. And we have our vertex map. We just need to add a few fields to make it looks grow. So click at the vertex map tag, go to the basic and use fields. And this will generate these freeze fields here. We can delete it for now. And let's add spherical field here. We can go back to the object selection mode to see better what's going on. And let's just put it where you want to growing to start. For me, it will be here at the end of the object. Now we want to add freeze. We can pause the live viewer here and click play to see what's going on. Uh, also make sure you have a bit more frames here. I have 210 just to see what's going on with animation a bit better. In a freeze, we want to change it to add and in a mode, we want to change it to grow. Now it will grow through our object like so. If we click at this plus icon next to the freeze, it will open an uh, extra tab, which where we want to add shader field, just apply it like so. Uh, in here, change it to add again. And here in the shader field, if we click on it, there is arrow next to the shader. We want to click on it and add the noise. Here, let's click at the noise. And as you can see, it already makes quite nice shape, like so. We can use whatever noise we want. For example, maybe electric looks fine. And we can change the animation speed if we want to, to one which will kind of make sure uh, those small patches are filled with the time because it will just change the pattern of the noise and eventually fill those gaps. Right now, the animation is a bit slow, like we don't go all the way up to the end in time. So we can click at the freeze and change the radius to 20 centimeters and it will be way faster, probably even too fast for now. I can leave it at 15 centimeters, which looks fine. And all those patches are disappearing, which is really good. Uh, we can now go here and we need to duplicate it. But before we do it, let's go to basic and change the name to growing. And here, let's right click on it and let's add it to the new layer just to make sure we don't mistake them. Now let's copy it. Let's add it to new layer. And if we go here to layers, we can change the colors like so of those two layers, just to make sure we can tell which one is which like so. And then this one in the basics, we want to change the name to growing 
delayed. And uh, let's go back to the fields here. We can get rid of all of those stuff and uh, growing delayed and just drag in the growing here like so. So we don't have copy. We actually just using this one and let's just add delay after it. And let's make sure it's on smooth and probably 20% is fine. We'll adjust it in a bit in a, in a live viewer. So yeah, we can just unpause the live viewer for now. And now let's go back to our node editor. Let's click at the material and node editor. And to make sure uh, everything is working, first in the diffuse, we can change it one material to red and second material to green to see the difference. And nothing is happening. It's because we didn't add vertex tag to vertex map. We want to add the growing here and we can see the growing now. If we pause it right here, we can see it's a bit smooth. We can make sure it's a bit more sharp by adding gradient after it. And we can just squeeze it in here like so. And you can see it's already sharp. Now let's change both materials to universal and GGX energy preserving in the basic. Like so. It's just the best settings to use any materials. And we can change this material, which is the green one, to metallic. This looks really great, but let's make it something like this. Uh, of course, you can use whatever material you want. I'm just going with something that is really visible with all those noise. And here I will go with similar material. Just let's see. Let's make it darker, more roughness and make it even darker. Yeah, something like this, maybe even more dark and more rough like so. We now want to add the burning shader between. So everything will be done here in the emission of the of this black material. So let's drag out from the emission texture emission. We want to add here vertex map and here we want to add growing delayed vertex map like so. Let's apply it to the texture here. And from what I remember, I need to I need to invert it like so. I'm doing it with the gradient so I can adjust it a bit more later on. And in the distribution, we want to add RGB spectrum. And here you can add whatever color you want. For me, it will be really warm orange, like so. And as you can see, we already have the line here. And if you click play, we have this nice fall off of the, of the heat or burning effect. But if we uh, pause it, pause it and just refresh it a few times, you can see the, the growing delay is catching up to the normal growing. And sometimes you just want to uh, adjust the settings. And in this case, you can do something like this. Just hit play and just wait for a bit. And for example, this looks fine. But just pause it and just add freeze here and add freeze here. This way, whatever uh, you will do, it will stay in the same state for all the time. Uh, and you can just keep adjusting the material and everything else, which is really cool. I will delete it for now because I don't really need to uh, have it. And you can see already why it's really cool to have it. I will just keep it play and I will change a few things here. If we go here to this gradient and adjust the gradient, we can change the fall off here. If we really squeeze it in, we can see. Uh, I think I need to, yeah, I need to actually squeeze it in opposite way so we can have really small line here. And it already looks really cool, but we can make a few changes here. Let's add the actually surface brightness so it's a bit better to, to manipulate the power. And in here, we will actually split the vertex map into two sections of our burning effect. We'll have the fall off and the line itself separated to have a bit more defined look of the ember. So I will just duplicate it here with the control. And on top, we'll have our line from the front. And on the bottom, we'll have fall off. I will make a bit more space here and click pause for now. And I will add noise to add a bit more detail into it. And I will use the noise for D. Uh, I will explain in a bit why. We can add another octane gradient here just to make sure we can adjust it a bit more. And in here, we'll add multiply after it, which will just blend those two things together. So we have noise on the whole thing, which if we connect it directly, we can see noises everywhere. If we pause it, we can probably see it a bit more. And it's actually a good uh, moment to just adjust the noise settings like transform and projection. You can also crank up probably the gradient here. I mean, uh, just squeeze it just to see it better. 
like so. And definitely, first of all, we need to lower it a lot, like to something like this. And in texture projection, I will change from the mesh UV to, to planar. It's like the box, but with ability to blend on the edges. But to use it, uh, we need to have three planar node after texture. And if we turn blend all the way down and just make it a bit bigger, we can see the line going on in the middle here or here. And if we just click at the three planar and use the blending, it will just blend between. Really cool stuff. We probably want a bit lower noise. And there was one really cool noise which works really well here. And it was uh, Poxo. I just need to adjust it a bit. Um, probably in a gradient, we just squeeze it in too much, but it looks really good. It looks really natural here, which I really like. And something like this looks fine. We can also lower the blend angle here because we get a bit of empty space in the middle. So I will just lower it slightly to like around 10, I think looks fine. Uh, between 10 and 20 looks fine, actually. If we go back here and connect multiply back, which is this noise here, uh, multiplied by our delayed growing here. And if we hit play, we have those really cool embers kind. And of course, you can adjust it if you want. I will actually scale it up slightly. And this will be our line. So we need to adjust it in a few places, like in here. We want to make sure it's actually glowing quite a lot. And we have just a bit of those noise inside, like so. We can change the gradient here as well. We just want the line here. Something like this. So we got a bit of noise going on now here. So it's not just same value everywhere on the line. And we also make it uh, way shorter, so we just have the line. And then here on the bottom, we'll add the fall off, which will be a really similar setup. We just want to grab our noise again. And we also need multiply, so we'll just copy it from here. We also can actually connect it directly to the emission texture. And we can connect this gradient here to texture two, and this noise to texture one. And of course, we need to add the three planar here, because the projection here is a three planar. So we also have it here because we copy it. And let's adjust the gradient here. I think we can leave it at the full. So it's like really long. We'll just adjust the gradient here actually and the noise. So we have those small patches here. But actually also I will change this color here to a bit more uh, gray. So we still have the fall off, a nice fall off, like so. And now the result is quite good. So we can make a bit more space here and add the add node and connect this to first. Uh, and this one we can connect here and just connect add to texture here. And we just mix those two together. If we hit play, we have both the line and the nice fall off. And we can change the power slightly so it's a bit more bright, like so. Looks really good. And again, we can change the color to whatever we want. This looks really cool already. It can be whatever you want. I just want to keep it in the color of the fire. And to make it even more uh, interesting, I use noise for d for this reason. We have time here. And if we go to the first frame and click at this um, shape here, we can make sure the time is zero on the first frame and we can just drag our timeline all the way up uh, and change it here to something like two or one. Don't go too high because it will be too fast uh, unless you have a lot of frames and just click at it again so it's red. And now if we go between this and this, it just goes from zero to two and it will make sure our noise is animated. It will be more visible here because it's the fall off. So we'll also do the same thing here. Time zero and at the end we can change the two and click at the shape again so it's red. And as you can see, if I go a bit slower, you can see it's animated. 
Also, if you want, you can change the seed uh, in one of those noises. So the line and the file of is different. Also, of course, you can change here the scale slightly. So it's a bit more different from the fall off and i think that's pretty much it for this shader most of the stuff is just here in the mission because i really didn't want it to go extra into details like making bump maps and normal maps and all of those stuff i wanted to keep it quite simple and i think that's it for this tutorial make sure to subscribe if you want to be up to date with my tutorials my goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week so there's a lot to see in the future also, you can go to my Instagram, where I'm usually posting ahead what next tutorial will be about. And I think that's it. See ya.